Hi again, this is Rick Adams from practicalcsm.com and today's podcast conversation is part two of a three-part conversation that focuses on asking resellers, are you a valued partner or just another supplier? Part one is already available, so if you've not already viewed or listened to part one, I recommend you stop this recording and go to part one first. This is part two, which takes off from where part one ended for a further 20 minutes or so of our conversation. I hope you enjoy it. Absolutely. I think that's very, very well put. Okay, so look, the usual rule in business is that it costs money to make money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and my feeling is that outcomes focus selling you know, leading to this valued partner status attainment with your customers is not going to be an exception to that role. So w- w- would you agree with that? And if so, what type of investment might be needed to move from being a supplier to being a trusted partner? So, so honestly, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's masses. I think it's a different way of having the conversation and it's changing the conversation with, with your sales guys to, uh, from being product-led to now being capability-led um, and asking those probing and right questions and bringing in the right people at the right time to be able to then start to, to bring that in line. So, uh, you know, we work obviously with a lot of partners out there and they're, they're, they're now changing. So we do a lot of sales enablement um, and um, we it's all about getting them to shift from I'm going to go and sell this wireless access point leading with the product yeah to now i'm going to go and ask what do you want to achieve by deploying wireless leading leading with the outcome exactly and it's and it's that kind of conversation so shifting that um yes there is some investment around you know pre-sales but again um glue help with that and obviously um uh, they have a lot of partners out there that do that sort of thing but it's all about um you know, making sure that the sales guys are empowered enough to go and have a conversation around capability and business outcome driven, opposed to and bringing in the correct people at the right time, rather than going and selling a widget. Because anybody can do that. It's more about now opening the customer up. And, um, and, may, and may I add to uh, empowered and incentivized? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you want to speak a bit about that? Because I think that's so important as well. Yeah, and and so um, so from a, from a partner perspective, you know, and, and we've we, we've shown this where a particular partner was selling very small commodity based items into a customer uh, had been for years. We went in and we changed the approach. Um, we ended up having conversations then with the CIO, um, and fast forward, you know, their, their revenue was uh, with this particular customer is probably about fifty thousand a year. Um, They've just secured a five million pound deal uh, with that customer um, on a brand new network refresh, security refresh, all this kind of stuff. Um, And that covers across hardware, software, and obviously PS. The partner doesn't have all the skill sets. So we've brought in the right people, but it was all about the person going in and having a conversation around, well, what are you actually trying to achieve here? And from the back of that, it was, well, I'm trying to achieve compliancy to certain security standards. Um, and from, well, would you like to have a conversation? All off the back of that one conversation, shifting from I can come in and sell you a, a product to now I'm going to come in and sell you an approach, um, change the whole dynamic. And so, you know, that has obviously shown massive amounts of value to that partner. Um, but we've got numerous case studies all around this. Um, where by shifting that from that conversation to to now being coming a value partner, you know they're they're going to go on and grow that account by another three million next year, um, and and again all across their accounts they're actually going back and having a look at what have we what have we sold into those accounts? Have they actually adopted it correctly? So are to the are they utilizing mm-hmm. the product sets mm-hmm. correctly? Now you know that's been done as a as a free of charge item because. We're going back and actually making sure that we sold these things into you. We want to make sure you're utilizing them correctly so that when the renewal comes around, Rick, it's a non-event, right? So we're not sitting there going, the customer is now going to go to RFP and we're going to go back to this cost-based model of who's going to get the race to the bottom. No, we're going to understand what uh, it, is what we sold them correct aligned to their business outcomes now. Is it relevant to them in the future? And can we also just secure that renewal? So 
from a from an expansion point of view for the partner and for the salesperson as well, because the salesperson would have only been selling in that particular account one commodity item, uh, you know, and he tried to get into other areas, but he's up against some of the other bigger tier one partners who are, you know, just undercutting every single time. Um, now that that salesperson is now being massively rewarded on everything with that account. So now he's going across, you know, not only end user compute, but he's going across uh, networks and security and going into UC. And right. uh, so it's massively beneficial for the sales people as well as the organization as a partner. All right. So there's so many things I want to pick up on on there. So that just that last little bit was where I was getting to when I mentioned about incentivization, because I have myself delivered training to very large SIs and reseller organizations. I mean, multinational corporation size um, and to very high powered um, systems engineers, solution architects, account managers. And I have proposed the outcomes focused uh, type conversations to them and explained how it works and all the rest of it. And I have sometimes, not by no means always, but I have sometimes just being told very clearly well you know particularly from account managers well that's great but i don't i don't get any commission for any of that so you're wasting your time talking to me because i i totally get why it would be so much better if our business did this <laughs> but i'm i'm not i'm not remunerated <laughs> to do it so i'm going to carry on selling discounted firewalls thank you very much um, yeah. and, and, and uh, so, so it's really important to bring your people with you and to make sure that you're incentivizing and motivating. And, obviously, and, and by the way, incentivization isn't all money, right? But nevertheless, the, yeah. the, the, the model that you use to reward your uh, particularly salespeople, you know, fits this new and different model that enables that person that you described to have, if you like, the let's call it the luxury for a moment. Okay, of going in more as um, you know a, a hunter and going in looking for challenges in that organization and being able to you know instead of like their their um, team manager on their back saying right we've got to ship at least. Um, you know, 500 firewalls by the end of the quarter, how many have you shipped, <laughs> right? Uh, instead is saying, well, you know, what what sorts of uh, conversations have you been having with your customer and how many challenge, business challenges have you uncovered that we may be able to help with? And that is a far better perhaps. Um, so what I'm saying is, is that the KPIs are different, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and I mean, part of the, um, and we're not going to talk around the Glue strategy, right? But the um, sure. the, the whole end-to-end -end around how Glue works is we go in and do a discovery. And as part of that discovery, Rick, it, I, it brings all of those things to light. So, yes. you know, if you if you get a sales guy, you know, we, we're, we're saying to people that obviously, you know, security is the number one hot topic at the minute. Um, at, well, it has, it has been for the last three years. It's just particularly relevant right now with COVID and everybody working from home. Mm. Um, you know, if, if the salespeople aren't incentivized or not paid on selling uh, security capability, it doesn't matter about the product set, but around that security question, they're not going to go and do it. And where, where we've done discovery sessions, where we've broken that down and said to them and gone up, because so, we get executive buy-in at the top, to say this is the difference between going and selling a product versus going and selling the capability. It, st it still could be the same outcome, right? So you could still sell that product because it matches the capability. What it does is it brings in a whole new different conversation. And so enabling that, um, you know, salespeople are, are paid on obviously what they sell and how they're doing that um, absolutely is critical, but that's part of the discovery phase and how that organization works, how it incentivizes its people um, and how it drives the salespeople to go and sell that user behavior um, uh, rather than, uh, yeah, rather than, you know, this is what you should be doing because it's good practice. If you ask those questions, you're absolutely going to open up more opportunities to you, not only as the salesperson, but also as the partner. And you're going to be able to bring in more product sets. You're going to be able to add more value to that customer. 
And ultimately, that's what it's all about, is that customer is looking not only for the value, he's looking for a partner that's going to go on that journey with him, a trusted person who he can call up and say, you know, I've got this particular risk at the minute within my business. Um, you know, how do, how, do I, how do I go about doing this? Um, and, uh, and them turning around and saying, well, actually, you know, this is rich. This is how I would approach it. These are the things that we can do to help you. Let's do a workshop together. Let's, you know, whatever it might be. Um, that's where you want to be because then you're in the mix. And if it's just, you're going to phone them up and say, you know, can I have uh, 50 access points? Well, you're getting that phone call along with another, you know, five resellers. You're probably going to get pushed down to procurement um as well because it is that commodity based item and yeah you'll get that 50 so you'll get that 50 aspects but what you won't understand is the bigger picture that while they're going to go and buy these 50 50 uh, uh wireless devices all of the stuff that's connecting to them all of the security that's around it all of the ps and the installation you're missing out on all those options by not having that one conversation and of course by the way you haven't added any value um, except the provision of the 50 access points. So why would you expect to be paid that much by the customer? Why should you get much profit from the deal? All you are doing is providing them with a product, which as you say, you know, yeah, the, the, the distributor's probably done most of it, right? <laughs> it does most of the work for you anyway. So, yeah. um, you know, you're not actually adding value as opposed to having come in to have a conversation about what that customer needs, given the challenges and the opportunities uh, and, and the strategies that they have uh, and, uh, and their vision for growth of their organization and helping them to understand what they really do need. And maybe it wasn't actually 50 access points and had you've done your job right if i could be as blunt as that maybe that's not what they'd be purchasing right now and that's uh, why yeah. you're a valued partner not a supplier right yeah and and it, and it is all about that challenge you know too too many partners or resellers are too quick to jump out the 50 right because it's 50 actually you should be going back and saying well have you had a wireless survey done in this exactly oh, yeah. yeah we'd love to supply you with that but before yeah. i do that before i take your order that's can we take a step back yes. okay and it, all right and and that's where you know that's where again you know i think people are scared to challenge customers um, right yes the customer's yeah. always right yeah and and to a degree right they can make a decision and that's the end of the, the decision. customer's yeah. always important yes Right. That's how I say when, when someone says the customer's always right in my head, I just translate that into the customer is always important and their opinion is important, but nobody's always right. Don't be stupid. I mean, you know, I mean, apart from anything else, what is a customer? It's a collection of people. Right. So you can't actually say a customer is right because it's a business and businesses aren't right or wrong. They're just legal entities. So it doesn't even it's, it's a nonsense in the first place in B2B. <laughs> And a hundred percent. And if if it was easy doing the jobs that we do from a customer's perspective, right? Doing that right. translation, or whether it's running head of networks or, or head of yeah. everybody would do it, right? And <laughs> learn as you do this, and you make mistakes. And it's it's you know being able to go to those partners and say, okay, oh, I'm not really sure what to do here. Um, mm and uh, can you help help out here or mm. um, we're thinking about you know some new innovational tech you know what you know where where, where we work with um, a lot of partners is helping them to understand you know generally there's three rules people are customers are looking to increase revenues and obviously profits they're looking to um, improve efficiencies within the current environment yeah. um, or they're looking to save save money and if you're looking for uh, going in and having those conversations from an innovation point of view for looking at uh, from a CX aspects. If you keep those three things in the back of your mind, that from, from a business level perspective, those are the three things that are really going to ignite with the business that if I can come in and I can help you drive a solution that's going to increase your revenue by 50%, you know, you are going to be that partner that's going to help them do that. Or if you're going to drive cost savings down um, by, you know, 100 million a year, then, you know, you're going to be the partner they're going to come to because you really help their business. And, and the same with efficiencies, right? And it's, it's looking at um, that different scope of instead of just selling stuff, 
Then so going back to your access points, so for example, maybe the software that they could also have purchased that wasn't in that deal that they asked for, that would enable them to automatically and remotely manage those access points such that energy utilization was reduced by 50%. Uh, saving them, you know, multiple hundreds of thousands over the over the period of the use of the of the access points, may have increased the size of the deal, which the which the salesperson was frightened to do, but would have made a a, a saving as great as the entire cost of the access points in the first place. Had they have so, so coming back to the uh, use case with the with the fifty grand right and the, and the five million pounds. Um, that's actually paid for itself out of the fact that the managed right. service that was being delivered um, over a three-year period cost more than 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 actually how much it's cost to replace. So, so, so the rule here is it's actually it's not about the cost; it's about the ROI, and that again, that's the nice thing about moving from product focus to, to trusted partner and outcome focus because obviously product focus is about the cost of the product and obviously outcome focus is about the ROI right I mean it's it's in the words so so it, whilst you're worrying as you say with procurement about the cost and how to get it down you know, they're 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 beating you down because because that's the only way it can work you, when you're in trusted partner, that is not the exciting conversation. That's the small number is the what it costs. Far more exciting is how to, rather than how to decrease the small number, is how to increase the big number, which is the which is the ROI number. Yes. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, where this particular customer wants to go is they want to be able to do certain things to drive revenue streams. Mm -hmm. To be able to do that, they were going to need a certain foot layer, layer of functionality and capability within their business. They didn't have that, and their managed service was over spec and, you know, was paying a lot of money. What we did was we took that whole package with the customer. Uh, we looked at it, we designed their strategy, and we said, this is actually where they need to go. Um, this is actually how much from a cost savings perspective as to how much it's going to be. This is how much the, uh, you know, the capability is going to cost you to implement. And when you put that as a blended managed service, um, actually, what happened was they could have the capability for less money than what they were paying today. And they can now go and drive those revenue streams to increase their business um, when that's implemented. So, you know, now they can go and do digital signage um, outcomes and they can be able to do the engagement within the stores and the people, all this kind of stuff. Um, whereas before they were focused around silos, they were focused around individual silos. Yes. And, and if you go to a lot of businesses, what will happen is they'll run a digital program. Um, they will run a customer program. And the customer one generally has more focus up at the board level than, than the digital one, generally. Um, and they'll run a cyber one. And the cyber one will be the least focused because that's the insurance policy that nobody wants to buy, right? Apart from when you're breached and then obviously it raises it and goes straight through the roof. So if, if the value partner can go across all three and look and say, well, actually, you want to go and do, uh, you know, you want to go and understand Rick. You want to understand when he walks into a into a store and, okay, we'll keep it at retail. Um, you know, that what you bought and, it and how you bought it and how you reached that decision to buy that Melbeck off the shelf. Um, then you're going to need to have the, um, uh, the foundational elements within digital to be able to go and do that. But it's going to have to be secure as well. And so actually there's a blend across all three programs and where the value partner comes in is if they're only talking about one component, whether that's in the digital space or whether that's in the security space, you need to understand the full picture because then being able to go back and support the CIO, the IT director, or whoever's presenting the business case back to say the actual business outcome is do you want to understand when Rick walks into the store he picks up that bottle of Malbec, how he got to that decision and how can we upsell and cross sell to him? That's the business outcome. To be able to do that, I need these components around security and digital. And that is where the true art of CX comes in is to understand all of that end to end components to be able to go and sell that back to the board. Enough to be able to sell it back and potentially partnering on delivery. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So, you know, all, so, all of that, 
Yeah. So all, all of the all of the partners uh, that do this, um, they go on a journey, right? And and actually, what ends up happening is up until the last minute, these guys are, are pressing. Uh, okay, so these are the capabilities. When the ball peg goes up for that business case, you don't talk about technology. So I've never been in a in a board meeting no. or presented back around. I'm going to go and buy, you know, John Switch. I'm never going to, you know, it's, they it's, do they not care, care whether it's product X or product Y. What they're interested yeah. in is the, the is the ROI of it. What what, that, what what the result is going to be. A hundred percent. And so from from uh, you know the the partner who's helping them build that business case, who's helping them to make sure that um, when that's delivered and adopted and 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 then obviously expanded as well um mm. then then what happens is they're looking to the partner to go and help them on that journey yeah um, and and it's so it's not just around the, de- the delivery there could be support mechanisms in place as well um you know and also how do we now take that solution to the next level okay so what you're saying is is that the um, VP global um, sales for uh, Waitrose might be lying in bed thinking to themselves, not being able to get to sleep, thinking to themselves, how do I understand my customers' behaviours better in order to in, 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 in drive increased revenues through the business by 20% like my like my CEO, CEO has demanded I get done and I don't know how to do it. They might be worrying about that. What they're not worrying about is which type of um, uh, IoT sensor might be best to use in the um, uh, on the shop floor uh, to understand people's patterns of m- movement and behavior. <laughs> they, 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 they don't care, Rick. You know, and and that's all the way up at the board level, right? Is that you know when you're when you're at that level, or you're and 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 actually, you mentioned something really key there. Is so CIOs or anybody at that level are targeted on specific things yeah so well, they've got to get a job done like anybody right and then and yeah. they're, and then and then and, and their jobs are very difficult ones uh, they, yeah, <laughs> yeah so, that's why they're paid so much uh, well, and big 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 problems <laughs> yeah yeah and and you know it could be it could be their you know their targets are they've got to reduce costs by 20 percent right or it could be yeah. you know and, and, and the way I always used to approach it, well, I can go and find that 20% cost savings because I can get rid of people or, or, or I can reduce, you know, I can hammer my, my vendors more and, and, and reduce my costs that way. Or I can go and make more mm. money. Mm, mm, mm. And, and so, you know, reducing that deficit gap. And yes, there are aspects around cost savings that you'll be able to do within a, within a customer, 100%. Um, but if you focused only on cost, then there's nobody's a winner, right? Um, what what happens is you either devalue the proposition that you're doing, um, so you cut it so fine that actually they're getting the very bare minimum. They're not getting that value proposition that they thought they were buying. Or um, what you can do is focus on, well, actually, if we go and do this, then what we can do is go and drive sales. We can improve efficiencies. We can do some cost savings, absolutely, no problem. But if you do the cost, if you drive efficiencies and you actually improve sales anyway, that one comes uh, as part of the as the bio. So I think, um, you know, par- partners uh, are in a difficult uh, stage now with COVID. Uh, you know, every- everybody's obviously now working remote, but actually this is the perfect opportunity for you to, to have those conversations with your customers is, you know, have your priorities changed um, in the last six months, I <laughs> guarantee you they have. Yes, um, yeah, exactly. And and they will be, you know, everybody's talking about at the minute that IT budgets have been slashed and, mm. uh, you know, people are being unfortunately made redundant or security port- portfolios are, are being brought up. Yeah. You know, now's the opportunity to be able to go and have those conversations. Well, okay, your business is, you know, suffering as everybody's is. How can we align ourselves to you, our brand to you, to make that better? How can we go on that journey together? And this, I think, is the privilege of working in IT, because pretty much every other industry, right, uh, um, you need it for a specific purpose, right? So you only need you only need to purchase a ship if you're doing shipping, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, and even then only if you're doing it multinational over 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 the sea over the oceans so 
uh, IT, on the other hand, you need it whatever you are and whatever you're doing. Yes. And and that's such a privilege. So here's the thing, right, is almost it does not matter what the problem, the challenge, the opportunity is. The answer is almost certainly going to in involve IT <laughs> to greater or lesser extent. Not absolutely always, but pretty much always. The answer is at least partially IT. Doesn't even matter what 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 it is. Okay, so that is the end of part two, and part three will be available next week to complete the full set. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are released, or go to practicalcsm.com and fill out the membership form to be kept updated with all sorts of free customer success-related content and discounted training offers.